I won't hear you in my safe space. My safe space. Here we go again. It, it's 2016. The anti SJWs are just, just, just crushing it, right? A bunch of people, a bunch of SJWs are propping up and they're and they're slinging their stupid ideals everywhere, and people are sick of it. You're like, get it out of my comic books, get it out of my video games, get it out of my movies. Let me, let me, let me just be entertained with the with stuff that I like, with art that is subjective, and just because you don't like it, it doesn't need to go away. You know, all of that good stuff. A lot of that stuff it came and gone for the most part. I would say over ninety percent. Like, say, when's the last time you heard me say uh, or use SJW as a pejorative? It's been a very long time. If anything, I've graduated to saying progressive ideologues because that's more of an accurate caption. Um, that's the that, like, oh yeah, because SJW is stupid. Whatever, whatever. It's dumb. Uh, progressive ideologues, because that's what they are. You know, they're they're very progressive people, but they're like really 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 just big into their ideals and it, it just became unbearable and so when we see this thing okay so I, I know most of you know what i'm talking about for those of you that don't know what i'm talking about uh marvel comics uh there is a uh, a run called uh, new warriors and the new warriors have been around for a while but now there's the new version of the new warriors and to be honest, I didn't talk, I wasn't going to talk about this really because it, it looked so stupid. It looked like a joke or bait or something that I was just like, I no, I'm good. I saw there was a trailer. I saw like maybe 30 seconds of the trailer and I'm like, I'm, I promise you I'm good. <laughs> I still haven't even seen it all the way. I've probably literally seen like 20 to 30 seconds of it still. I haven't seen anybody's take on it. The only time me, Chris and Sweeney on the snark tank, we talked about it briefly we talked about it a little. We didn't do a huge dive into it or anything. So I still don't really know much about it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to watch. And uh, for those that are listening, we're going to listen to this together. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's uh, you already know this is going to be bad, man, because if you don't know, two of the, of the heroes are named Snowflake and Safe Space. All right. Yeah, 2016 all over again. Like I'm saying, when, when I, I don't remember the last time I've heard it, 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 like I've never called anybody a snowflake or talked about safe spaces for years now. So you gotta wonder like why is this stuff even being brought up at all? What is going on with this? Why is Marvel Comics even letting this shit roll out like this? I don't understand. Maybe we can understand by actually completing this trailer. It's like a little bit over four minutes, so uh. Let's let's just get into it. My name is Daniel Kibblesmith. Sorry, boy. I got interested in the New Warriors later. I remember seeing them on the shelf when I was a kid, picking up comics in the '90s, and just feeling like they were too cool for me. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I don't know. I looked at them. I'm like, yeah. I'm good. So because the new warriors are the authority figures in this story, they have to be mentoring new new warriors who are under 21 and uh, subject to the, the laws uh, that triggered the outlawed event. Look at this. Just just y your first glance at the new new warriors. <laughs> like, you, it, it seems like some dickhead made this to troll. Like, not a... SJW, not a progressive ideologue, but just some dickhead that's like, you know what, let's take everybody for a ride. We're going to make this and we're going to put in all these stereotypes and all this stuff that everybody would poke and laugh at. We're going to have these, these we're going to have some minorities. We're going to have all this pink and, you know, these crazy colors. We're going to have some fat motherfucker. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to make it super inclusive. And it's like, nobody wants this. What? No, not a soul wants this. There's, there is nobody, not even the progressive ideologues. They don't want this either. Who wants this? What is this? This has to be a joke. I still feel like this is going to be a joke. And and if if and I want to be like, if it comes out to be a joke, please give me a, 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 a gold medal or something and be like, I told you fucking so. 
The artist on New Warriors number one is Luciano Vecchio. He designed all of the new New Warriors and gave them costumes that felt as modern as the New Warriors costumes to sort of feel classic and instantly familiar. Oh, they look so dumb. Like, <laughs> they look so stupid. I can't... When I was a kid, I did uh, gravitate towards people that looked super cool, like comic books and comic book characters that looked really rad. There's no way in hell like I, I can gravitate to something like that as a kid. And I, and I know kids are pretty much relatively the same. They're empty, empty vessels and stuff that looks really cool and gaudy, like gets their attention. And this ain't it, Chief. So the first character that we're introduced to is Trailblazer. She's a group home and foster kid, and she inherited from her grandfather a, a magic backpack. I bet there's a lot of food in that backpack. <laughs> <laughs> Screen time is a internet kid taken to its sort of logical conclusion. As a youth, he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas, and that has patched him permanently into the World Wide Web. Oh, sick, bro. Sick. Screen time. That's, he's super savvy with the internet, bro. That's so super cool. <laughs> Come on, man. You can't convince me. I you still people are gonna tell me, yeah, this is one hundred percent real. This is one hundred percent real. I know it looks one hundred percent real. I know it's on the official. What is it? The official Marvel Entertainment. Uh, ugh, it's officially on this on the YouTube. But I mean, I'm still just I'm I'm reserving my judgment. I'm like, please let this be fake. This is so dumb. This is not gonna work. Now it's time to introduce uh, the, the two that everybody uh, is here for, uh, Snowflake and Safe Space. Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, and their names are very similar to screen time. It's this idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as uh, derogatory to take those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. No, 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 no. Let me tell you something. You know the last time taking a word and flipping it on its head has worked? Nigga, that is the last time that has worked. This is the last time when people would drop the hard R's, you know? And then, and then they flipped it and made it their own thing, and it's here to stay, obviously. That's the last time that's happened. That's the last time it's worked. It has not worked for anything else. <laughs> it won't work for anything else. And this in particular, some of, the, some of the most mundane insults, snowflake and oh, go to your safe space. Oh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock this and be proud of it. There's nothing wrong with being a snowflake. There's nothing wrong with my safe space. I'm like, shut up. What is you are completely projecting because I'm <laughs> I know obviously in 2016 and that era you were probably called everything beta cuck uh, uh what is it like it nowadays you'd probably be called a simp you could Jesus man Safe Space is kind of a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. Yeah, just a stereotypical jock wearing a pink and having uh, the shortest shorts imaginable. Now, hey, like I, I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a dig at short shorts. I actually rock short shorts um, quite proudly. But the thing is, I do it. Uh, to, to fuck around essentially i'm not i'm not here and loud and fucking prideful and all that shit jesus snowflake is non-binary and goes by they them of course snowflake is non-binary and goes by they them <laughs> i forgot i'm i'm honestly i honestly i kind of forgot about this i know i talked about this briefly before in my other podcast but i forgot about that i forgot that uh uh, <laughs> uh they are nine binary and it's just like this is not the representation that non-binary people want i guarantee you I guarantee you there's not going to be any people that actually care about these comics and buy these comics who happen to be non-binary and going to be like, that's cool, man. That's a great representation of who I am. You know what I imagine they would like more than anything? They would like a regular superhero, one that's drawn really well and that looks badass, and they happen to be all weird like that. They'd be like, oh, shit, they just happen to be like that? That's pretty cool. It's kind of like, say, the first time when I was young, when I discovered that, oh, um, 
uh, people that act like or people that have the same mannerisms as me can be gay as well because you know usually the only representation of gay people would be on tv and they'd be ultra flamboyant and stuff like that so i just thought like oh you're gay that's just how you that's just how you are or something like that i'm a kid obviously but then when seeing like i was watching the real world or something like that and i think there was some gay dude on there but you couldn't tell he was gay um, only he, you could only tell he was gay because he said he was gay you wouldn't have known just by looking at the dude or talking to the dude and i was just like oh okay and i imagine that's how somebody who happens to be they them or whatever the fuck just like well you're just some person and then you happen to be like this i don't know man i don't know i, I just feel like i'm correct in that assessment because i feel like that's how a lot of people would like to be that that want to be represented in a certain light you know you're a black dude and maybe like say uh you know like say when spawn spawn al simmons like oh that's cool man spawn's black that's dope now imagine if Spawn's just like fucking eating chicken and watermelon and he has guns and shit and gold teeth and stuff and there's hoes surrounding him. I, I, as I say that, I'm kind of like, I kind of want to see that now. Snowflake has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile. And uh, this is a character who is uh, turning it into something sharp. No, that's dumb. Uh, snowflakes are very light and they're like a little peck on the cheek, essentially. Little snowflakes. We know what these things are. And you're trying to turn it on its head and make them cool ass shurikens or whatever. No, man, that doesn't work. <laughs> this, this, uh, I... I still can't believe this is real. E Negative is the goth kid. When he was a baby, he got a rogue life-saving blood transfusion, we assume from Michael Morbius, and now he has a very similar look. B Negative is a stupid vampire, and I don't care about B Negative at all. What a super uninspiring character, and I, I feel bad that Michael Morbius was, uh, thrown into this at all like that that's just a shame so that's it uh those are your characters those are your new warriors and that is not it chief holy shit man um i i guess i i i'm more on the the side where i hope that this is some type of a joke and we're being we're being taken for a ride like it's an elaborate joke because it just seems like the worst time possible to do this it doesn't seem like I would have totally understand and thought this was real a few years back, 100%. If I saw this back in 2016, early 2017, around that time, I'd be like, oh, yeah, like, I understand. They're trying to capitalize off of this, this wave of um, progressive I idealism or whatever. And so, and it's so far past that. I'm, I'm, scratch I'm scratching my head to see, like, what is, what, what is the real motive behind this? Because... The whole diversity, I mean, have you seen how many shows are out there and how much diversity is out there, how much forced diversity? There's plenty out there. I mean, go watch a CW shows or something. It's it's all out there. In the comic books, they already did runs. They did, like, uh, that black girl that was going to be doing some Iron Man stuff. They were doing that Lady Thor version. They were doing, uh, I think, X-23 or something was, like, Wolverine, which actually kind of makes sense, and I was, cool, I was totally cool with that. Um... Uh, they were already doing stuff like that and then they were doing even more stuff and then a lot of the things um what do you call it the ratings or the the numbers weren't very good they weren't very good because it was kind of obvious what they were trying to do like i say when it when it comes to diversity and you're trying to do something real and legitimate you just gotta just not force it in just put it in there and if they're good character people will gravitate towards them the biggest two examples I already mentioned spawn and i still do want to see spawn as like i don't know like a 70s <laughs> uh i don't know just a, a sucker like a brother you know and calling everybody a turkey or something like that but on the real though like say someone like john stewart the, the green lantern uh, he was put in for diversity purposes but they wrote him well so he just worked in the um in the 2000 what was it 2003 justice league cartoon works very well he's one of my favorite characters i love the dude and so obviously spawn was one of my favorite characters of all time and spawn was the number one comic in the 90s for a long time and fuck man i'm just i'm all about spawn i got i got these spawn chucks i got i got still a bunch of the toys i i, I, I love spawn just this shit and the fact that keith david is voicing spawn in mk11 just gave me the biggest stiffy ever man just the biggest stiffy but no um 
we'll see what happens with this because apparently it's real and it's dumber than all hell nobody gets it i don't i i don't know you guys tell me is there something that i'm missing is there has it has the joke been spoiled and it's been figured out and i'm late to the party i don't know man this is so dumb this is so fucking dumb <laughs>